At the beginning of the 15th century, there was a huge demand for reading material throughout Western Europe. This fueled entrepreneurs in their desire to develop a new way to produce books quickly and cheaply. By 1450, five men were desperately seeking the breakthrough. Only one of them would succeed. His name was Johann Gutenberg, and though he never achieved the fabulous wealth that he had envisioned, his invention of the printing press proved to be a turning point in history and ingrained his name in the history books. Gutenberg was born to the wealthy Gensfleich family in Mainz, Germany. The exact date of his birth is unknown, but the city of Mainz has symbolically allocated it as June 24, 1400. As was the custom of the time, he took his mother's name. The young Johann was trained in metal working, becoming a member of the Mainz Guild of Goldsmiths. In 1430, Gutenberg moved to Strasbourg, where he set up a metal mirror-making business. At the time, there was a great demand for these mirrors by pilgrims who believed that the mirrors could reflect the healing powers of the sacred relics of their owners. As he churned out these mirrors for the masses, Gutenberg worked in secret to develop a new way to transfer ink to paper. This was a very expensive thing to dabble in, and he had to borrow to finance his experiments. From the start, though, Gutenberg foresaw the massive potential financial rewards of being the first to produce a printing press, and so was willing to take financial risks. He also went to great pains to maintain secrecy in order to stay ahead of the opposition. While in Strasbourg, Gutenberg developed a new printing system. The printing press that he would eventually develop brought together a number of existing technologies and added one key innovation movable type. His brilliance lay in creating a system that integrated both the old and the new to allow the task of printing to be undertaken with unprecedented efficiency. Gutenberg's press was the same kind of wooden screw press that was being used to crush grapes. This type of press was already being used to squeeze water from newly made paper. Gutenberg was the first to realize that the same process could be used to print ink. A problem that Gutenberg had to overcome had to do with the screw that was used to press the platen, which was the flat plate that spreads the pressure across a wide area of paper, causing smudges. When the screw was turned to increase pressure on the paper, the printed impression would blur. To overcome this issue, Gutenberg inserted a vertical wooden box between the screw and the platen. Gutenberg's next issue had to do with the type of ink that should be used. His dissatisfaction with existing inks led him to develop a new type of ink made from lamp black and varnish. His press also advanced the use of paper, as opposed to vellum or parchment, both of which smudged easily. Paper proved to be far more suitable for mechanical printing using metal type, producing a smudge-free type that was permanent. Though his new ink and adaptations to the press were important factors, it was the invention of movable type that was Gutenberg's real breakthrough. He made metal letters that could each be reused after a book was printed. Up until then, block print technology was being used. Each block had to be curated specially for each page of a book. Once used, it had to be thrown away. The initial step in producing movable type was to engrave a relief letter in reverse on a steel punch or patrix. This was used to strike a matrix of softer metal. Any irregularities in the matrix were filed down, and it was put face up in a deep mold into which molten lead alloy was poured. When cooled, the resulting reverse image would print a correctly oriented letter. Nicks cut into the letter's shanks helped the compositor align them rapidly in his stick right way up. The cost of producing Gutenberg's movable type in large numbers was huge. Returning to Mainz in 1448, he managed to attract the interest of an investor, a local goldsmith by the name of Johann Fürst. He backed Gutenberg with an 800 gulden investment in 1450, and the same amount again two years later. That is the equivalent of more than $2 million in modern terms. 
the investment allowed Gutenberg to produce the needed type and print six short works. By then, the money had gone, and he tried to convince his sponsor to back a much greater project, the production of the first printed Bible. The Bible was, and is, a huge book. In fact, it is 66 different books, all in one volume. This presented a major publishing challenge. Gutenberg, though, saw the potential financial rewards from doing so. Many households saw the possession of a Bible as an essential requirement for personal devotion. If he could mass produce the Bible from his press, he could sell it at a much cheaper price than those being produced by hand or by block. Gutenberg began cutting the type for the project around 1450. Composition began two years later, with the printing being completed by 1456. In the last year of the project, six compositors were working on it. Each page had two columns of text, consisting of 42 lines of type. It is believed that around 185 copies were produced in that first run. Forty of them still exist today. The Bibles sold for 30 florins. In addition to producing Bibles, Gutenberg made quick money from the printing of indulgences. These were pieces of paper issued on behalf of the Pope or a local bishop, offering written promises of dispensation from time in purgatory. These slips of paper had previously been handwritten. Now, Gutenberg could print them by the thousands. He received a commission on every one of them. Despite his success with the sale of indulgences, Gutenberg never attained to the great wealth he had envisioned. He was not a businessman and ended up losing a serious legal battle with his investor, John First, over a loan repayment. First went on to form a very successful partnership with Gutenberg's former employee, Peter Schoeffer. Gutenberg's advantage of being the first printer soon evaporated as more and more printing houses sprang up. Others grew rich as a result of Gutenberg's invention, while he himself went on to die in poverty in 1468. Gutenberg's invention became a major catalyst for the Renaissance of the next two centuries and fed the scientific revolution, both of which shaped the world we live in. As a result of the information superhighway that his invention unlocked, Gutenberg is considered to be one of the 100 most influential people in human history.